Hello everybody, thanks that you have been waiting patiently so long for this. Now I finally figured out the second SQL advanced certification problem about crypto, which is called Crypto Market Transaction Monitoring. And I'm going to present it to you in this video. Before we start with that, I want to say to you that I'm activating from now on the super thanks button under all of my videos. That means if you appreciate the solution and uh, I could help you out a lot, you can now choose to donate something with the super thanks button to me. And I will appreciate that very much. Now, of course, you can also do with the super thanks, you can ask a question and I will prioritize these questions over other questions and I will try to answer it faster. That being said, I will still answer all of the questions under my videos and I appreciate all the comments that you make and all the likes that you give. And that is enough being said. Now let's start with the video. Okay, now we start. We are starting again with SQLite Online, where you can build your own databases and you can experiment with the code. Now in this video, I created a database for myself that is very similar in the structure to the database that we actually have in the test. And we are going to work with this one so that we can solve the problem. Now we are going to import the database. The separator is semicolon. And it's the first line has the column names. All right. Now what we need now is also the problem statement. So let's look at the problem statement. So as part of a cryptocurrency trade monitoring platform, create a query to return a list of suspicious transactions. Suspicious, suspicious transactions are defined as a series of two or more transactions occur at intervals of an hour or less. They are from the same sender and the sum of transactions, transactions in a sequence is 150 or greater. A sequence of suspicious transactions may occur over time periods greater than one hour. As an example, there are five transactions from one sender for 30 each. They occur at intervals of less than an hour between uh, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. These are suspicious and will all be reported as one sequence that starts at 8 a.m. and ends at 11 a.m. with five transactions that sum to 150. The result should have the following columns. The sender, the sequence start, the sequence end, the transaction count and the transaction sum. All right. So we are going to have a list of sender and receivers from cryptocurrency. This is the table. So we have four columns. That is um, date time, the timestamp, the sender, the recipient and the amount uh, which was uh, transferred with this transaction and now we have a list of transactions with uh, date time sender recipient and amount and we want to find out the suspicious sequences and suspicious sequence it is whenever a timestamp is less than an hour from the other one first condition second condition the sender has to be the same so the recipient it doesn't matter we don't focus on that but we focus on the sender it has to be the same sender and the amount has to be 150 or greater. So there are three conditions. If all these conditions meet, then we have to report this. So let's look a bit more at this table here. And now we can also see here sequence start, sequence end, transaction count and transaction sum. This is what should come out in the end. And the sender is on the left of this. So we have the column sender, sequence start, sequence end, transaction count. So how many transactions were actually in this suspicious sequence? And what was the total sum of this suspicious sequence? All right, so let's look now at the data table that we just imported. Select star from 
crypto to get a better, better understanding of it. All right, so now we have here the four columns, date, time, sender, recipient, and amount. So in my case, the amount is much higher than in the actual example, but the numbers doesn't really matter. So as long as you have the same uh, structure. Okay, so let's order this a bit. Order by, by we want to order by timestamp and we want to order by the sender. But we want to first order by sender because we want the transactions from the same sender, one next to the other, and then we want to order by timestamp. So first it should all sender, the same sender should be together, and then also after the time should be ordered so that we can see if it's one hour or less in between. So because we ordered like that, we have all the transaction from the one with 57 in the end. Unfortunately, that is a very long string that you cannot really recognize so good the name, but you can see in the end, this is 57 and this is 58, the next string. So we have three transactions here from 57 and we can see they are from the 21st of May and then from the 24th of May. So three days between them and then again, three days. So this is not suspicious because it is not less than one hour. It is not even less than one day, it is three days. Okay, so there is no problem with this transaction. Now let's look. So let's imagine how would we look as a normal person and then from that we can abstract to the computer like how could we write the code for SQL. So first we look, if you would look uh, with your eyes for the suspicious transactions, what would you do? You would um, of course first order it if you can by the sender and then you would look on the left to the timestamps. And then you would look on the day, is it the same day? And then you would look at the hour, is it within one hour? So that's what we are gonna do now. So let's look. Okay, so now we can see here transaction. That is actually from 4th of June. And this is 18.30 and this is 19.20. So it is less than one hour and it's both the same sender. It ends with 59. So this can be suspicious. So let's look at the amount. If the amount is greater than 150, yes, the amount is a very big actually, 44,000 and 19,000. So this is definitely greater than 150. That would be a suspicious sequence here. And we can also see the one before 59 is also within one hour for to 1830. The 1819, so this is also part of this suspicious sequence. So we have a suspicious sequence with uh, three transactions from this sender here with this hash. And this would be something that we would want to get out in the end of the list. So what? how would we write it in the list? We would say the sequence starts here at 1819 and ends at 1920. And the, um, uh, the transactions count would be three because there are three transactions and the amount would be the sum of these uh, three numbers here, which would be around uh, 90,000 probably. All right, so now we have an idea how we can see, how we can manually do it um, if we would have to do it by hand. And now we can think about how can we transfer this uh, to the computer doing it to doing it with SQL. So my idea here is that we find somehow these uh, rows where we have less than one hour difference between the senders. And then we would pick out these rows. And then we would put these rows into our own list. And then we would uh, pick out from this, we would pick out the start from the timestamp and the end and the um, amount, the sum amount and the transaction count. And we would all group this by the sender because we have to do that for each sender. And uh, one thing that would be very helpful while we try to do that is we have to add a column. And what column do we want to add to this table? I suggest that we add um, row number column because that is easier to refer to the, to the um, rows if we actually have a number for each row. So how can we do that? Let me see, I wrote this one down. Okay, so we want to alter the table crypto and we want to add a column that says row number 
and it should be an integer column. It should be an identity column. That means that by itself, it's already filling the uh, the values with one, two, three, four, five for each um, for each row. It gives already a value, and it should be the primary key. So this row really can be identified through this uh, through this column. So let's add the new ta uh, column. And then we can give out our table again so that you can see what actually changed. And we can see it here in the end. So now we have here a row number. Now, of course, it would be nicer to have it in the first column, the row number. But now we have it in the end and that's also fine. So now we can see how many total rows we have. We have 200 rows. And this row number is going to help us in the further process now to actually get the right solution. Okay, so now another help that would be very good to get to the right solution is we have to know somehow which rows we even want to look at and which rows do we want to look at? The ones that have less than an hour of timestamp here, one to the other row and of course are in the same sender. So how can we actually get this out? Well, we can go through all these rows. Let's open a new tab here. If you, by the way, if you solve this later in the, in the solution in, on HackerRank, you cannot open tabs, but you can just write um, the code one on top of the other in the same, in the same page. So it, you can just separate it with the semicolon and that's fine. All right, so now we want to get all the columns and we also want to get a different column in another column we want to add and that is gonna be the difference per time between one row and the other. Why we want to add that? Because we want to know the time difference of less than 60 minutes. We can use the date diff function for this and we want to make the date diff difference between one row and the lag of another row. In order to show you an example for that, I'm going to make here, I'm going to give out the lag from, well, let's give out the timestamp and let's give out the lag from the timestamp. And now, similar to the row number function, we have to also define how do we want to partition it. We want to partition it by the sender because if it's actually another sender, then we don't care anymore. I mean, if it's less than one hour, but it's another sender, then it's not suspicious. Suspicious. So we definitely want to partition by sender. Now let's see if I have the really the right syntax here, MSS square leg. Here's a lag example. So he goes one row above and zero steps. Okay, so here is the partition by and then is the order by. Okay, so first I make partition by sender. I want to really partition this by the sender and then I want to order by sender and date time as we did before. And I will call that lag date time. Now you can see what he is actually doing. So what he's doing is he's taking the date time from the row above. So this is one way that you can actually access the row above. You can also access two above or three above. You can just configure that here. But usually you want to access the row one uh, above and then you do that here in the lag date time. You have here 21st of May 1619 and this is actually from the first row here. So why do we need that? So we wanted to make the date difference. We, let's get out all the columns plus the date difference between, between the lag from the date time and the actual date time as time minute difference. And we want to have it in minutes. So this is one argument that we still have to give in the beginning of date diff function in minute and we want to have this difference. 
Okay, so let's run this. All right, so now we can see that we have the difference here. We can see, let's order this also by sender and date time. We can see that we have 4,320 minutes between uh, the first row and the second row. So this is actually three days for 4,320 minutes. And this is also exactly three days here between 21st and 24th of May. So let's look at interesting rows. For example, this one is interesting. Here we have 11 minutes. And we have this row 4th of June 2022, 1830. And the row before was 1819. So this was actually 11 minutes different. He calculated that correctly. And now we can use this date diff function that we just created in order to get to fish out our rows here that are of interest to our suspicious sequences because now we have the possibility to access this under 60 minute difference column and that will be important for the further for the further queries so let's actually make uh, this uh, cte a small temporary table min difference where we calculate the minute difference and now what do we want to have we want to select the row number from min difference the table that i just created min diff where now the where clause what do we want to give as a restriction well we want to have everything where minute diff is smaller than 60 minutes is it smaller or equal in our or less okay so it's smaller or equal to 60 minutes so let's see which row numbers would be that so here we have the temporary table and now we only want to have the row numbers Okay, we still have a mistake here. Incorrect syntax, near select. Ah, with min diff s, we have to write s here. That is the wrong syntax. And we cannot use order by anymore because this is a common table expression now. We can only give it in the final result. Order by sender date time. Okay, so we have 7, 8, 34, 49, 102. Are these the correct rows? Let's give out everything to see that better. Okay, it looks good. So the minute difference from these rows is 11 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes. So they are all questionable rows, which is great. Now, you may have noticed that we have now here five rows, but they are not all the suspicious rows because we only have 11 minutes in the second row in the there's still one row before this where it's not the, written the difference. So we have now the sender 59 two times, but there was another transaction, if you remember from the beginning, the third transaction, where the sender 59 still had a suspicious sequence. And you can also see here at the other sender with the ending 72. He's just one time in this, in this select list, what I have here. And that is because there is another transaction before this one that is part of it. Because as you remember, we are making, we are calculating a lag. We are calculating um, this timestamp from this row minus the one before this row. So the one before this row, he is excluded here. It's just uh, the second um, row from the second suspicious transaction is included here, but not the first one. So what we actually want to do is we want to get all these rows and we also want to get all of the rows before this row. So we want to get all the ones from row number minus one. And this is also why row number is very helpful because we can get now all the rows that they have also the row number six because we have the row number seven and then also the row number seven. Okay, we already have this here because he has three transactions but also the row number 33 and 48 and so on. We also would need this for the solution. So what we do, we actually make this another common table expression. And this is the ladder row. 
and not the first row. And now we select, so we don't want to have all, we just want to have the row numbers here because this is in the end the ones that we are we are using. And now we want to select row number from crypto where the row number is in. And now we make another trick in SQL. So we write the where filter, row number in. And now we make another select statement. So you can do that if you want to filter by a certain row number, but you don't really, you first have to define another query so that you can find a list where you want to filter by. And that is exactly, exactly what we are doing now. We are making, uh, we are filtering by the row number and with this in function that we just opened up here, we can create another list by which we can filter now. So now we select so first we want to select the row number from row number ladder and we want to union. So we also want to select the row number minus one. So we want to get the, also the row before this row that we selected before from row number ladder. Okay, here we still need a comma. Now let's see what which rows we have now. Okay, so we already have more rows here. That looks good. 6, 7, 8, 33, 34, 48, 49, 101, 102. So to check this one again, let's get all the columns out here. Select star. And also We also want to order, order by sender date time. Okay, so we have three transactions from the one with 59, which is great, which is with the row number 678. And we also have not a single sender here. And so all the senders here, 72 has two rows, 89D has also two rows, the 60 has also two rows. So that's very important because there should not be a, any sender that is, just has one row. Otherwise it would be not working right. Okay, so that looks good. And here we can see we have still an amount smaller than 150. Here we have 1349 with this transaction, 89D. And this is something we still have to filter out. And of course, we still have to group it by the exact by the exact uh, columns that the task is asking for so if we look at it again we have the columns sender sequence start sequence end transactions count and transaction sum okay so now we have the right row number select row number and we can use this list of row numbers now for another query after this one. It's going to be another one. This is not an easy SQL tenants. Now row number as. So now this table we call row number and we can refer to this later. Okay, so what do we do now? So we select now from crypto. And now we really want to get from crypto and we want to select where row number in select star or select row number from the table row number. Okay, the table is also called row number. That's a bit misleading. So I call it row number table from row number table. Okay, but what do we want to select? I haven't, I haven't chosen anything here. So we want to select first, we want to select the sender. And then we want to select the sequence start. Now the sequence start we can select with a minimum aggregation, minimum aggregation on the date time as sequence start. The sequence end we can 
choose with the maximum aggregation on daytime, maximum aggregation on sequence end. What else do we need? We need the transaction count. So we can do that with count from, let's, what do we want to count? We want to count the row number. We can count the row number because it is unique. And transaction count. And now we want to have the sum from amount as transaction sum. Okay, so now we ask this from crypto with the row number filter that we calculated before, the right row numbers. And now we still want to group by the sender because all of these sequence start, sequence end should be grouped by the sender. So let's run this. Okay, so I forgot to take out this order by clause. And by the way, I can use this again in my final query, order by sender date time. Okay, so let's order by sender. We cannot order by date time because it is an aggregation. All right. Should, it doesn't say by what we should order. Order the data as scanning first by sender, then by sequence start, and finally by sequence end. Okay. So let's do that then. Order by sender. Sequence start would be min from date time. And sequence end would be max from date time. So this is the correct order as it says in the test. All right. So now we have here the sender. We have a sequence start, we have a sequence end, 1819 until 1920. And this sequence can also go longer than one hour as we read in the description before, because there can also be more transactions. But we still have one transaction sum, 62, that is less than 150. And it should be at least 150 in transaction sum. So this is another filter that we have to do. We cannot filter in the where clause because we aggregate it with transaction sum here, sum from amount. If we would also say and sum from amount should be bigger or equal to 150, then that would not work. As you can see the error here. An aggregate may not appear in the WHERE clause unless it is in the subquery contained in the HAVING clause or in the SELECT list. So this doesn't work because it's aggregating the function here. You cannot use it already in the WHERE clause, but you can use it in the HAVING because the HAVING is calculated after the aggregation took place. So we can say HAVING SUM, we have to take this end here away, HAVING SUM from amount bigger or equal than 150. And as we can see, we only have three uh, rows left and they are all with transaction sums 150 or greater. All right, so this was the query for the crypto market transaction monitoring. If you find a more efficient or easier solution, I would be very happy if you can post it in the comment. If you have questions, of course, you can also post it. And I will share my code on GitHub and I will also share a database that you can use and that you can just uh, try out yourself. All right, so thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you liked it and I see you in the next one.